a race for glory forever written in the hearts of many. J-League battle for the championship. Let's turn the clock back to 2005, a season which had five teams with a possibility for absolute glory on the very last day. It was nine years since the J-League was a one-staged contest. Two teams had joined the league, making 18 teams. This was a season for revolution. FC Tokyo had a great start. The team in red and blue were in their fourth year under Hara. After four matches, three wins and a draw had them in first place. Not for long, a nightmare six losses in a row awaited them. Down they fell from first spot. Up stepped Kashima Antlers, looking for glory for the first time in four years. Toninho Cerezo's sixth year looked good with a variety of creators and a solid defence. Despite losing to Cerezo in match week nine, the first 13 games resulted in 10 wins, two draws and a loss. Very impressive to say the least. 10 points in the clear. O oh, Kashima está bem, está bastante feliz. Eu acho que o grupo está consciente daquilo que nós temos que buscar esse ano, que é, que é, que é o título da G League, né? E a gente vai em busca disso até o final. However, even Antlers could not keep the fantastic form. Called the Hot Six, games in July took its toll and gradually but surely, their rivals closed the gap. Gamba Osaka were looking for their first taste of glory with Nishino in his fourth year. Boasting a fantastic lineup with an explosive attack, they conquered opponent after opponent. Match week 11 against Grampus. Masafumi Maeda, great goal which was actually the 10,000th goal for the J-League. Gamba looked good game after game. Oguro and Araujo made a formidable partnership. In his second year from Espals, the Brazilian striker was a fantastic finisher. Match week after match week, he just kept on scoring two hat-tricks and managing to score two goals in an incredible eight matches. Thirty-three goals he scored that year. Obviously the top scorer and also the MVP too. Gamba came in touching distance of Antlers. Três pontos importantíssimo, né? Então dependendo do resultado aí do Kashima para a gente é, ficar na liderança, então um resultado muito importante, né? Para dar aí, né? Mais força a gente para cada partida dos capitólios. By the time match week 22 ended, they had danced to the top of the table. Match week 25. A big match. Gamba 
versus Antlers. What a game it would be! Ninth minute, Antlers take the lead. Captain Ogasawara with a delightful finish. But Gamba strikes straight away. In the 22nd minute it was. Yes, you guessed it. Of course it was going to be Araujo. Then Antlers in the 40th minute. A mighty strike from this man. Absolutely beautiful, right in the corner. Ogasawara's free kick glides in. But not for long. Gamba equalized in an unexpected manner. Sogahata's mistake is punished by Oguro. Back they come again. Then it was the 89th minute. The talisman Araujo scores a second of the day. But, 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 it was not to be the end. Additional time, more drama. The unthinkable, Alex Mineiro saves the day for Antlers, equalising in the last seconds. A heavy clash of gold leads to a draw. Strangely, these two teams disintegrated in the final stages of the season. Two victories after the Antlers game. One win and five defeats condemned them. Antlers, on the other hand, can only manage a single win up until match week 33. Things did not go as planned. So, the title is up for grabs. Up stepped Urawa Reds trying to put down the Ghosts from their championship defeat to Marinos the previous year. Only a single win from Buffbalt's second year in the first eight matches. But with Ponte's introduction from Leverkusen and fellow Bundesliga player Marich's introduction, things started to change. Not only did their attacks start to harmonize, Tulio and Tsuboi were rocks in defense. Things were up in ascendancy. Also joining the title race was Jeff United Chiba, changing their name from Ichihara to Chiba that year. With the experience the Bicha Osim, later coaching the Japanese national side at the helm, his revolutionary tactics took the J-League by storm, turning his third year into a memorable season. The Yamazaki in the Bisco Cup final in November. After penalties, they had got their first taste of glory. And with that momentum, they were in the title race too.
šta ja mogu da im kažem, ne može mi se dovoljno zahvaliti koliko su nas pomogli. Sad bi trebala ekipa da se zahvaljuje na drugi način, da nastavi da igra ovako, da bi ovi ljudi mogli i dalje da mirno žive i da navijaju. Sereza Osaka steamed up the league table to join the title race. Fifteenth the previous year was disappointing for Rezzo, but in his second year as manager, Shinji Kobayashi structured his team well. Seven wins on a roll from match week 22. Winning in a stubborn manner, the end of match week 33 had them in first place. Their first title was on the cards. A most incredible end to the season, from Cerezo in first to Jeff in fifth place, five teams had a sniff of ultimate glory, with only two points separating the five. Kickoff at 2.04. Destiny awaits. Serezzo take the initiative with only three minutes on the clock. Nishizawa scores with his head. The title comes closer and closer for Serezzo. But in the 20th minute, They can see the goal. One all. Meanwhile, Gamba in second place. It was the 12th minute. Oh. What a finish from this man again. Araujo coming back from suspension. But in the 37th minute. Kawasaki Frontali scores to make it one all. They can see from a corner. Gamba look in trouble. Kashima Stadium. Antlers lead Racel 2-0. Jeff cannot score against Grampus. With action elsewhere, Reds are in third place. They get an early goal, and in the 13th minute, Ponte makes it 2-0. With the first half done, Reds are in first place. All is up for grabs in the second half. Serezzo only need a win. And then it was in the 48th minute. Nishizawa again. Now with his right foot scores his second goal. Up they go to the top of the league table.
elsewhere. All sorts of drama. Eighty first minute. Jeff concedes from a mistake. All was lost. But no. Additional time. Abe buries the penalty to make it one all. Then a minute later. The unbelievable. Yes! Sakamoto scores to turn the tie upside down. Three points in the bag for Jeff. Antlers look calm. Nozawa. Oh, what a great finish. Then, Honda scores three points in the bag for Antlers. Then Reds. A cheeky goal indeed. Marich scores a third. Then Yamada scores a fourth. Three points for Reds. Pressure on. The two leading the table. Gamba struggles. Miyamoto scores in the 56. A beautiful header. But in the 62nd minute. Another goal from another corner. But in the 78th minute. Ianaga is taken down. He gets a penalty. Up steps Endo, who missed in the Nabisco Cup final. Calmly done. They hope for a miracle. The clock is ticking. 89th minute, Serezzo lead FC Tokyo. If it finishes like this, Serezzo will be crowned. However, tragedy strikes. They concede in the final minute and come crashing down. At approximately the same time, something happens with Gamba. Araujo smashes in a fourth goal for the team. The players, the managers, the fans, they all know it. And then... Victory for Gamba. Only a point separated the winners from fifth place. For Gamba, their first championship in history. ハム文字分たちのね手から離れた優勝だったんで、あのその終了間際にそういう向こうの結果を聞いて、あの自分たちがそういう立場で、で、まあホイッスルになった瞬間にはもう涙しかなかったんですけど、いやもう最後までなん
อย่าลืมไลค์และ Subscribe นะครับ Like subscribe push notification Like subscribe push notification